It's no secret that a stigma exists against video games. Let's face it, the industry has been used as a scapegoat for all of society's problems in the last few decades. That they're somehow responsible for why little Timmy is performing poorly in school and why he's aggressively acting at home and refusing to eat his vegetables. Global financial crisis? Because of video games, of course. But are they truly the mindless or brain-rotting junk they're made out to be? I can practically hear your mind already screaming NO from the other side of the computer screen, and you know what? I wholeheartedly agree with you. Gaming gets a pretty bad and unfair rap sheet, and all too often other forms of media focus on the exaggerated negative instead of the realistic positives. Mostly this criticism comes from people who don't have a strong experience or understanding of video games, let alone how to play them. Oftentimes it seems to the outside viewer that games are speaking a completely different language. And you know what? That might not be that far from the truth. So I ask this question, is gaming a form of literacy? Gaming, for all intents and purposes, does seem to have its own here inherent language, and I'm not talking about coding or the scripting side of games design. I'm talking about the inherent language gamers understand while playing video games, a common understanding of a game's rules, controls, and restrictions that most gamers will inherently have. By definition, a literacy is a skill set in which a user possesses competence with a language through such common understandings. Numeric literacy is based on a common understanding of numbers and basic mathematics. Written literacy is based on a common understanding of the alphabet and how we take meaning from sounds and letters. And like all other forms of literacy, it's rooted in the idea that other people will know how the alphabet, mathematics, and in this case, game controls, work. Like any other language, gaming competence is something that has to be learned before it can be applied. Gaming and educational theorist James Paul G sees playing video games as a learning experience, and one that builds upon technical and specialist literacy for the player. Another theorist, Kurt Squire, states that games literacy can be defined as developing expertise in designing rewarding experiences for oneself in a game world. Both of these theorists support the idea that gaming expertise and competence is a learned literacy. Consider this for a moment. Think of each time you've bought a new game and when you sit down to first play it. Let's assume that it's a first-person shooter like Halo or Call of Duty. Regardless of whether you're part of the console crowd or the glorious PC master race, there's a certain level of expectation that you would carry into the game and how it would control. Usually, you'd use the left control stick or the WASD layout to move around, and use the right stick or the mouse to control the camera functions. Typically, a left mouse click or a right trigger button is used to shoot, space dash A is used for jumping, and so on and so forth. There's some things you don't need a tutorial level to teach you because you've done it dozens of times before, if not hundreds. The same rule applies to pretty much any genre of game, be it platformer to RPG, strategy to simulator. Each time you need to make a movement or a command, most gamers know they don't have to look down at their controllers or keyboards to identify the X button or numpad 5. It's become reflex to many of us, a matter of muscle memory. Writing is no different. Here, here's a little experiment. Pause the video now and try writing out a sentence. Any sentence will do. Go on, pause now and give it a try. Have you done it? Okay, now, don't think so much about what you just wrote, but how you wrote it. You didn't have to think about how your hand would shape individual letters or words, because you're so used to doing it many times before. It's muscle memory. That theorist that I mentioned before, James Paul G, refers to this as a technical form of knowledge. Even if you've picked up a first-person shooter for the very first time, if you're a reasonably seasoned gamer, it would only take a few seconds of playing around and testing the controls before you had a pretty concrete understanding of the game's controls and limits that will serve you for the rest of the game. James Paul G has stated in publication that good video games operate by a principle of performance before competence. In other words, you'll need to learn the lingo of the game before you can be expected to beat it. You'll need to know that spacebar will mean jump or macro 4 means cast fireball before you can be expected to undertake the challenges before you. In a similar fashion, G states that the content of video games are, at their core, a set of problems, and that the knowledge and language of the game, or the controls and the rules, are the tools that you need to solve these problems. This is what's called situated and embodied learning, where players gain mastery over the language of the game, which in many cases is the controls, before being able to tackle the challenges of mad scientists, falling blocks, and zombie hordes. This also explains situations where we judge a game to be bad. Often the worst offenders are those that break down in how they're controlled, there's nothing more frustrating for a seasoned gamer to fail or die for a reason that wasn't their own fault, but rather the fault of poor controls or poor game design. You've all had that feeling at some point. 
That is the feeling that a lot of non-gamers are likely to feel the first time they attempt to play a complex video game. Because they're not yet literate in this field, they dismiss the medium altogether as an intelligible waste of time, not realizing that turning the controller doesn't actually help you steer the virtual car. Well, unless it's Mario Kart Wii, but that's a discussion for another time. For many non-gamers, it's difficult to understand why gamers find them so much fun. In Matt Pat's Game Theory episode on why do we play video games, it's said that one of the three core needs of fun that are satisfied by video games is that of autonomy, or the ability to make meaningful choices and decisions. Theorist Janet Murray describes this as player agency, or the ability to navigate and control an interactive medium. Gaming is unlike any other type of media before, in that it uses interactive literacy. We're now living in an era where gaming has evolved to the point where the problems and skills required to solve them are becoming increasingly complex. As a result of this evolution in technology, gamers and gaming culture are continuously being redefined by the evolution of its literacy and how we interact with these games. Kurt Squire states that games are perhaps the quintessential site for studying digital literacies as a medium of interactivity, both with respect to the human computer interface and among constellations of users. Video games are a medium of the computer, and in understanding them, we can understand what it means to think, act, and learn in simulated worlds. So I look back at my initial question, is gaming a form of literacy? In my humble opinion, there's no other answer besides yes. For many of us, learning this type of literacy has been one of the most impactful and memorable on our lives. It's helped develop our problem-solving skills, micromanagement abilities, and created a gamer-literate subculture by which many of us define ourselves. And for many of us, we'll remember what we learned in video games more so than what we learned in 8th grade mathematics. And when you think about it, which form of learning was truly the more successful? Thanks for watching.